When a cell divides, it goes through something called the cell cycle. The cell cycle is like the life cycle of a cell. It's a series of growth and development steps a cell undergoes to end up dividing and forming daughter cells, which then themselves will begin their own cycles. Depending on the type of cell and the organism, this can take anything from 10 hours up to maybe even years. There are three main phases in the cycle. There is interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. And in this video, we will go through these three phases. Now, interphase is actually split up into three further phases. G1, or GAP1 phase, S for synthesis phase, and G2, GAP2 phase. So starting with the G1 phase, what happens here is that the cell grows. It grows and it develops. Lots of all the normal cell processes occur, protein synthesis and respiration. Um, tubulin is made, which is going to be used for the microtubules, which are needed later to form the spindle in mitosis. And lots of ATP is produced um, because the process of division that happens later on is very energy intensive. Then we move to the S phase, the synthesis phase. This is where the genetic material is copied. Chromosomes replicate to become double-stranded chromatids. This is where DNA, when DNA replication happens. The cell grows some more and specific proteins that are required for things like DNA replication are produced at this point. Then you move on to the G2 phase. This is where you may get some organelles duplicating, more cytoplasm is produced because the cell is gonna split in half soon and you're gonna need more cytoplasm for that. And at this point also the DNA is checked for errors. Now it's very important that the cell uh, cycle is controlled very, very carefully. And also that the DNA is checked for errors, but you don't want to, mutations to occur and those to be passed on. There are two key checkpoints that you need to be aware of. One is between the G1 and the S phase, just before the DNA gets copied. And the other one is between the G2 and mitosis phase, when the cell is going to divide. And the thing that controls the, uh, how the cell moves through this cycle and when it moves on to the next phase are proteins called cyclins. Now, different cyclins control when each stage of the cell cycle occurs. They do this by binding to enzymes called cyclin-dependent cyclin kinases. These then become active, and these uh, cause phosphate groups to attach to other proteins. These proteins then become active themselves and carry out tasks specific to one of the phases of the cell cycle. So here is an example of how this works, because that all sounds a little bit complicated. Let's look at checkpoint one uh, as the cell cycle moves between the G1 and the S phase. Now, during, during G1 phase, two cyclins are produced, one called cyclin D, another one called cyclin E. These will then bind to these things called cyclin-dependent kinases, and in this case, they're called CDK2 and CDK4. Then, looking specifically at the cyclin D, CDK4 complex, this then phosphorylates a protein called RB. So it adds a phosphate group to a protein called RB. This protein normally inhibits DNA replication. It stops DNA replication happening. But now that it's got this phosphate group attached to it, it doesn't work anymore. It stops working. And if it's not inhibiting DNA replication, then that means DNA replication can start to happen. And if DNA replication starts to happen, then we move into the S phase of the cell cycle. So here you can see how the process is controlled moving from G1 to S phase using these cyclins. Now there are four main types of cyclins in human cells and unless these reach a threshold concentration, the cell does not progress to the next stage. So you can see how these different cyclins build up and reduce in concentration to move through the cell cycle in this graph. Extracellular proteins called mitogens also play a really crucial role in activating cell division and cell growth. These mitogens bind to cell surface membrane receptors and activate signal transduction cascades inside the cell, which activate transcription factors, produce cyclin D. And again, that all sounds very, very complicated, but it's just a series of little reactions, metabolic pathway, one thing activates another, which activates another, which will cause a specific gene to be read, which will then, during protein synthesis, be turned into um, cyclin, a particular cyclin. So it's just a step-by-step -step cascade, what was called an a, a signal transduction cascade of little metabolic reactions to get the cyclins produced. Mitosis is the next phase of the cell cycle. In interphase, the chromosomes replicated. 
So we now have two complete sets of DNA. What has to happen now is that it has to be organized and split evenly into the two daughter cells. And that's what happens in mitosis. So mitosis is actually split up into four further stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So starting with prophase, in prophase, the centrioles begin to move to opposite poles. We've got a pair of centrioles, we've got uh, the centrioles being duplicated and they move to opposite ends of the cell. The nucleolus breaks down, followed later by the nuclear envelope. The duplicated chromosomes are clearly visible with the two sister chromatids joined by a centromere in the middle. In metaphase, the centrioles form the spindle, which is made up of these microtubules. And these microtubules are attached to the centromere of each chromatid pair. They push and pull them in various directions so that they eventually get organized down the middle of the cell, which we call the metaphase plate, uh, down the equator of the cell. So they're in a lovely long line of double chromosomes. What happens in the next stage, anaphase, is that these then split. The centromeres split that are holding these two chromatids together, and the chromatids get pulled apart. Once that happens, we now refer to them as chromosomes again, because they're now back to the single chromosomes that you'd expect to find in a normal cell. They get pulled centromere first towards the opposite poles of the cell, so they are nicely collected in each end of the cell. This is done by the microtubule fibers contracting, which uses up a lot of ATP that was produced in interphase. Finally, we move on to telophase, where the spindle starts to break down. It's not needed anymore. Uh, the nuclear envelopes start to reform, the nucleoli reform, and the chromosomes um, become less dense again. What we've got now is we have done nuclear division. We've got two nuclei in there with a complete set of DNA in each one. But what hasn't happened yet is the cytoplasm hasn't split. It's still just one cell. So we now need to move on to the final stage of the cell cycle, which is called cytokinesis. Now this happens slightly differently in animal and plant cells due to the fact that the plant cells also have a cell wall which complicates things a little bit. But in the animal cells, the plasma membrane is pulled inwards around the equator. It's sort of pinched inwards in the middle to form what's called a cleavage furrow. And this is done by a little contractile ring of protein made up of stuff called actin and myosin fibers, which you find in, in, in muscle as well, but it's this little contractile ring which will just squeeze around and pinch in between the middle of the cell there to split it up into two uh, separate cells. In plant cells, a new cell wall has to be formed across the equator of the cell. A middle lamellae forms first and then cellulose gets deposited on that structure down the middle uh, of, the, of the cell. Now in your experimental work, you will prepare a, something called a root tip squash. What you will do is probably get a, a, a few millimeters from a growing root tip, maybe from an onion or, or garlic, and um, in there you're gonna find lots of cell division happening because it's a particular area of growth called a meristem in a plant where you're getting lots and lots and lots of mitosis happening. If you use a dye called acetocorcine, you can actually stain the chromosomes and hopefully see and identify cells that are undergoing different stages of mitosis. Mitosis is the most common type of cell division and it has various uses. You find it in asexual reproduction, but it's mostly used in other organisms for growth uh, and finally for repair. So remember that in mitosis, you produce two genetically identical diploid cells. Diploid cells means that they have two sets of chromosomes, what we call 2N. So you start off with a cell with two sets of chromosomes, one from the mother, one from the father, uh, 46 in a human, 23 pairs, and you end up with two identical cells, also 2N. So, my, for mitosis to occur, you need DNA replication to occur, as you know. But there is a problem that we need to know about, need to talk about here, which is that when you copy DNA, the DNA polymerase can't quite finish copying the five prime ends, and it actually doesn't copy the last 10 bases of the DNA. So every time you copy the DNA, it would get 10 bases shorter. Now, fortunately, the cell has a way of dealing with this, and that is these things, these called a sort of expendable caps on the ends of chromosomes, which are called telomeres. They've often been compared to the ends of shoelace, the little plastic ends that you get on a shoelace. 
It's a bit like having those on the end of your chromosomes. Now these are literally repeated sections of DNA with the base code TTAGGG. Now these will get shorter each time the DNA replicates, um, which means that the crucial DNA code is protected. That's not getting shorter, it's just these telomeres that are getting shorter. After about 60 or 70 cell divisions, the telomeres, however, will eventually run out and the, that DNA code is no longer protected and the cell stops being able to divide and enters a natural state of aging which we call senescence. Now this is thought to be a major contributing factor to why we get old, and why we have a certain lifespan, because our cells just all get to this point of senescence once our telomeres um, run out, they get too short. Some stem cells are special and they don't reach senescence at all. This is because they produce an enzyme called telomerase that build back up the telomeres as you go along. Now, when scientists found that, this out, they thought, it's amazing. Why don't we just give uh, normal cells uh, telomerase and then we'll just live forever. Our cells won't get to senescence and we'll just keep be, they'll keep being able to divide and we'll solve the problem of aging. However, um, there's a reason why normal cells don't express uh, telomerase. They're lacking a particular gene called the telomerase reverse transcriptase gene. Um, and we've seen that certain cells actually have a mutation where they do start producing telomerase because of this, they do have this gene is working. However, these cells can often end up causing cancers and tumors and therefore just giving cells telomerase and letting them reproduce over and over and over and over again is not really a good idea because it can clearly lead to cancers. So remember, the cell cycle is made up of those three phases, interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. In interphase, the cell is basically preparing for division. The DNA gets copied in the S phase. In the two gap phases, you get growth occurring in protein synthesis and ATP production. Then in mitosis is where you get nuclear division. The DNA that has been copied is, is split up evenly. Um, the chromosomes move um, by the spindle and the microtubules pulling them to the opposite poles. And finally in cytokinesis, the cytoplasm divides and you end up with two new daughter cells.